Hello everyone, good morning. morning. How's everyone today? Good. Well, here we are at uh, Faith Lutheran Church in Port Elgin. And my name is Pastor Dara Rath. And uh, this service is videotaped and shown on our website as well as on YouTube. And Sogging Times online newspaper also carries our worship service. So, I would like to acknowledge the people who are going to be participating in the worship service today, and that is our Director of Music, Adrian Little. Uh, David Spatzel will be singing the songs and recording the worship service. And uh, Karen Friday will be reading the, doing the readings. And thanks to everyone else, the ushers, and to Cedric for running the computer and so forth. It takes many people to get things going here. So even though the world is quite heavy due to the pandemic and to the horrific war that's going on in the Ukraine, over two Sundays, just two Sundays, our congregation was able to donate $4,662 to Canadian Lutheran World Relief. That is incredible. Well done. Also, the Soggy Shores Ministerial asked us to help gather up some quilts and some knitted items and diapers and so forth so that they could get the items onto a shipment going to the Ukraine. And so St. James Church in Williamsburg, St. Mark's Church in Chesley, and our church, uh, we have gathered up all kinds of things for them and they'll be delivered this afternoon over to the missionary church. They're doing some sorting there. And uh, things that don't get to the Ukraine this time, they will be here at a depot for the refugees who will be coming to Canada. So these things will be used for sure. So two purposes, all wonderful. It just is an illustration of genuine caring. And uh, I want to share something with you. I've asked people to perhaps look at the uh, website from Sophie Shore's uh, online newspaper. She has a wonderful article in there about the vigil that happened on Wednesday evening. The Sogging Shores Ministerial invited people to come to the vigil, and we had it at the park, the little park that's near Becker's Shoes there. And um, it was really quite well attended. And we, the local ministers, we prayed with everyone. And then one of the pastors, who's quite techy, connected with a minister in the Ukraine on his iPad. And it was three o'clock in the morning in the Ukraine. And this man prayed with us in English and in the Ukrainian language. And the pastor showed all of us there with our candles, uh, having this vigil for them. But the most significant thing is they played a video of them having worship in the Ukraine, just a snippet of 30 seconds of them, while the bombs were going off near the church. They kept on praising God no matter what. Now, think about that. Here we are, we're going to sing a hymn here in about two minutes, less than that. And just imagine there being a bomb going off down at the beach or up at the mall here. And we just keep on singing and keep on praising God. These people are resilient and to be in that little park here, watching that man talk about his country and the way that they're going about still continuing to worship, even though the bombs are going off. We don't have a concept of that. And so I just wanted to share with you that for me, watching that on Wednesday was an incredible moment. It was really, really meaningful. And the people who were there were blown away by it absolutely blown away some people here who were there anyway enough said we came here to worship our God so this gathering hymn is gather us in please stand and sing number 553 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. practiced it. 
And we're just, we're, this afternoon, we're going to, just after this service, we're going to be taping the service for the Wednesday Lent service that is happening every Wednesday. All the churches in the area are doing a service. So this will be our service, but it won't be shown until the 30th of March. But this is what we're going to play on for that service. So we'll just play one verse. And you folks can clap along if you want. We are one. Isaiah 55, verses 1 to 9. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no mercy, come, money, pardon me, come, buy and eat, come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts and your thoughts, the word of the Lord. Good morning. Psalm today is Psalm 63, verses 1 to 8. Please respond with the bold printed verses. O oh God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. For your 
steadfast love is greater than life itself, my lips shall give you praise. My spirit is content as with the richest of foods, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. I will rejoice. Second reading, First Corinthians ten, verses one to thirteen. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and twenty 3,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. The word of the Lord. You stand for the gospel affirmation. <clears throat> to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you re repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here. For the year, three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, 
let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, then you can cut it down. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. So, a tornado touches down in soggy shores, destroying buildings and construction and blocking the highway with uprooted trees and downed power lines. Russia invades the Ukraine, driving the people out of their country to be put into the camps in other welcoming countries. Their entire life savings are in two suitcases and a duffel bag. In our scripture reading, people are asking Jesus about two tragic incidents. Pilate's order to kill two Galileans while they were making animal sacrifices, and the collapse of Cilium that was part of the fortification of Jerusalem. They asked Jesus, why do these kinds of things happen? Was this God's judgment on them? Were they wicked people? And Jesus sidesteps his huge question and focuses instead on human life. His question is, why are we given life? Jesus uses the parable of the fig tree to remind people that God had planted them on the earth for a purpose. In other words, Jesus recommends that things be stirred up around them, that people be fed, the branches pruned, so that with care and love, they will blossom. And then they will produce to the glory of God. So the following story is called On the Right Track. It's a true story. On June 15, 1911, a little boy named Wilbert Audrey was born in England. As a little boy, Wilbert loved to go with his father, who was a poor preacher, and do rounds with him. And often the father took them on the train to visit some of the parishioners. So Wilbert loved talking to the railroad workers. Though he had a difficult time in school, Wilbert grew up and finished college. He decided that God wanted him to be a preacher. So like his father, he became an Anglican priest. He was a pastor for many years, but he was never very good at it. In fact, one church fired him, and he even considered leaving the ministry for some other profession. In addition to this, Wilbert was also a husband and father, and one day his firstborn son Christopher came down with the measles and was confined to bed. So Wilbert uh, amused his son with a story that he made up about a little train engine that was sad because it couldn't come out of the station for a long time. Christopher loved the story of the little train and he begged his father to tell it over and over again. Wilbert finally wrote it down, drew some pictures, and his wife encouraged him to send the story to a publisher. And the first book was published in 1945. Wilbert wrote many other books for children about trains, and today most children know about Thomas the Tank Train, the tank engine. In his books, Wilbert focused on morality and grace and redemption. He was honored after his death in 1997 with the Order of the British Empire. Like the gardener who pleaded with the owner of the fig tree to give the tree another chance, Wilbert was transformed to make a difference in the lives of so many children. He found out what was good at, what he was good at, and what he was supposed to do, and nourished by his family to be creative and do what he loved. He had a second chance. The parable is really timely for us in this age in history and for our church. This church was planted for a purpose. We need to take this matter seriously and start reaching out to folks and making invitations for people to come here. Do we need to dig around the roots of our evangelism? Do we need to add some fertilizer? We just are not keepers of the aquarium. We need to stir things up nourish the people of God, and welcome them here with open arms to people to come 
where there's love. And I'm a new pastor here, and so I can phone everybody on the roll, and I can go visit all these people that are on this roll, and I will. That's where I'm going to start. But we're a team. We are a team. And at the moment, I know of three or four people who will come here when we stop having blizzards. People have been isolated so long, maybe they just need some encouragement to come out into the world and be with people again, to actually talk to people. To be with us and know that we care with the, about them as a congregation would. This pandemic has caused people to think about their faith, about their relationships with God, and maybe we can nourish that. We want people to hear God's word because it's liberating and it's life-giving. This church was planted for a purpose. We are planted for a purpose, to bear fruit that members old and new might be drawn in to receive the gifts of God. And they, in turn, will be gracious gifts of God to us. When I finished the bishop's exam in Waterloo, I was around a big table with all these people asking me questions and grilling me about being a pastor. And they sent me upstairs to wait to find out if I passed. And when the bishop came up the stairs, I was, you know, holding my breath. And he said, Dar, you're going to be a good pastor. And all you have to do is just love them. That was the message. So, folks, I'm here and I will do what I, I just love what I do. I love being a pastor. So you've got it. <laughs> <laughs> Dwight at my installation in, uh, in uh, Williamsford, he said, <laughs> look out. <laughs> <laughs> I remember what he said. I was thinking about that yesterday. He said, well, look out. <laughs> but here we create a space for folks, a place where they can explore their faith in God. People watch us. They know what we say we believe what people hope to find here, and they must find it here. Let's reach out to those who feel unnecessary and respect each other's gifts. Everyone is important. Everyone is loved by God, and everyone is essential. Now, I want to tell you that I'm not going to give a sermon like this every Sunday. This is it. <laughs> this is it. But what inspired me to do this was these people from the Ukraine with bombs dropping around and they're still appreciating having a church to go to. We just can't take that for granted. We just cannot. So that's my, uh, uh, what do you call, fire and brimstone preaching, uh, probably for the year. But Remember it. It's important. We're here for a purpose. And let's have other people come and join us and enjoy it. And know about God by coming here. Now, have you fallen asleep? Is everybody awake? Go like this. Oh, good. Now, I want you to hear this last story. Here we go. I want to make sure that you are awake and, and really paying attention. Here we go. A churchgoer wrote a letter to the editor of his local newspaper complaining that it didn't make any sense to go to church every Sunday. He wrote, I've gone for 30 years now, and in that time I have heard something like 3,000 sermons. I can't remember a single one of them. Therefore, I think I'm wasting my time, and the pastors are all wasting their time by giving these sermons. The letter to the editor ignited all kinds of controversy. The editor was delighted. The letters came in about going to church and so forth and so on. And then someone wrote this letter that stopped everyone in their tracks. The writer wrote, I've been married for 30 years. In that time, my wife has cooked 32,000 meals. <laughs> 
But for the life of me, I can't remember the entire memory, the entire mem menu of a single one of those meals. I do, however, know this. I know that each of the meals my wife prepared nourished me and gave me strength that I needed in order to do my work. If my wife hadn't given me these meals, I would be physically dead today. Likewise, if I had not gone to church to nourish my spirit, I would be spiritually dead today. So when you are down to nothing, God is up to something. Faith sees the invisible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. Thank God for our physical and spiritual nourishment. That's quite a letter, isn't it? I couldn't say it better. Amen. Amen. So we have an appropriate hymn to sing, number 720, which is We Are Called. So everyone stand, please. <laughs> Sunday because sometimes these prayers aren't relevant to what's happening in our world. However, I also want to comply with the way that you normally usually have been doing worship, so I'll try this. I'll try that this Sunday. Here we go. Draw, let us pray. Drawing close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church around the world in all its forms for pastors, deacons, bishops, chaplains, and mission developers, for church councils, committee chairs, and all lay ministry leaders, for congregations that contemplate difficult decisions about the future of their ministry. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For the health of this planet and the well-being of its creatures, for, lands, for lands impacted by droughts and at risk of wildfires, 
for fig trees and vineyards that produce fruit for our nourishment and delight, for animal habitats threatened by climate change. Merciful God, for those called into position of civic responsibility, for judges, attorneys, court administrators tasked with uncovering truth and delivering justice, for activists and community leaders who cast a vision of a more compassionate and equitable society. Merciful God, for those who call upon you for mercy, for all who live in poverty and experience hunger, for any who feel tested beyond their strength, for those who are hospitalized or near death, and for all in need of healing. Merciful God, for the advocacy efforts of this congregation, for those whose faith leads them to speak difficult truths and engage in difficult conversations with policymakers, for those who promote mercy over vengeance or retaliation, merciful God, for those whose earthly journeys have ended, we give thanks. With all the saints, we praise you for the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Merciful God, accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need. For the sake of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please let's share the sign of the peace with one another. Please be seated. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth fruit from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
I need to tell you about my friend Chad Huddingman. He was a pastor in Walkerton, and I was a student. He came, asked me to come down there and do the sermon. So I went to Walkerton and I did the sermon, and I, he said, and then you have to sing the great Thanksgiving. I said, are you kidding me? I'm not doing it. He said, yeah, you have to. So I worked the hardest. Doug Squire helped me with that. Then we got to the communion part. I started to sing the great Thanksgiving, and then, Chad, who was very expressive, went like this, and the whole flagon dumped over, and it started to run down the front of the table, 
and one of the assistants was mopping it up with a cloth. <laughs> we had wine all over us, all over Chad. But the important thing is that he didn't stop. He didn't miss a beat. He yeah. just kept right on going. And the rest of us are like, oh. <laughs> Dorothy just went and got another bottle of wine, and you know, he just kept right on going. It was amazing. I just had to tell you that story because when I was putting this on here, I immediately had a flashback <laughs> of that really interesting service. Please stand. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this faith, this gifted faith toward you and in fervent love to one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And here's a blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through life's challenges and protect you from the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. And may all God, my Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we're singing. Amen. 723. 723.